Shalom, and welcome to All the Colors of the Rainbow. Previously, we have discussed two different words with different meanings for the word red. We have discussed that orange and yellow are both related to the idea of gold. And today, we're going to go on to the color green. There are two words in Hebrew that mean green. The first of these is yarok, or as a noun, yarek. In Genesis 1.30, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. You have to be careful in the King James, because every time they mean food, they say meat. So green herbs are not meat as we conceive of them, but they are food. This green is the idea of living vegetation. Exodus 10:15, where they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left, and there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. All the vegetation was struck by the plague. Another meaning for this root is in Deuteronomy 25, 9. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and lose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. Talking about the laws of Yibum, uh, the leveret marriage, if a man dies and his brother is to raise up uh, son, children, to his brother's wife. And if he's not willing to do that, there's a ceremony of untying the shoe, and then the wife um, will spit in his face. The idea uh, that spit or mucus coming from the body can be kind of a pale green color. A related word attached to this pale green color is Yerakon, and uh, we're going to see two meanings. Deuteronomy 28:22, Yahweh shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish among the curses for disobeying the law. So Yerakon is translated as mildew. If you've ever had any kind of mold growing in your house, you know that there's kind of white and black and red and green. So this is the green kind of mold or mildew. If you live in a damp area and you have a basement, probably you have seen one of these. Jeremiah 36. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces turned into paleness. The idea of a fading color, uh, fading away from a bright color, and then we, we even use the idea of um, looking sickly in English, and we say, well, he looks green, I mean, he's sick, maybe sick to his stomach. So those concepts are connected. It's interesting because the reason that we see leaves as being green is because there's a, a pigment, which is chlorophyll, inside the leaves. And when there's a lot of chlorophyll during the growing season, then the green color will dominate and mask the real colors that are present in the leaf. When it becomes cooler out, the uh, organs, the organelles that feed the chlorophyll into the leaf close up and then the leaf doesn't receive any chlorophyll and then we see the colors that are really in the leaf, the reds and the golds. The function of the chlorophyll is to capture the sun's rays and utilize that energy to manufacture the plant's food, which is just simple sugars. And these are the basis of the plant's nourishment. So 
when when the juices are flowing, when the sun is shining and the plant is able to absorb nutrients from the ground and the sun's rays, the plant is green and it's full of chlorophyll. As the daylight hours shorten, we begin to see the chlorophyll decrease. So this idea of paleness, of fading, is attached to the natural process of the leaf. Just connected with that, we can see that the word uh, green, as it appears in the New Testament in the Greek, is chloros. It's the same as our word chlorophyll. And it's used for green, for vegetation, in Mark 6, 39. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And this is chloros. Later in Revelation, we see that the word is translated as pale again. Revelation 6, 8, and I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with all, with the beasts of the earth. So uh, just parallel to the idea of the chlorophyll coming out of the leaf, because the, the leaf can't process, because it's out of the sun's rays, there are no sun's rays, and the leaf becomes pale, and here, sure enough, here's a pale horse that is um, bringing death and destruction to the earth. I don't know why, and particularly they use the idea of pale here. There are four horses in Zechariah as well. None of them is green or pale. Um, I guess the idea of a green horse was too strange to the writer, so they made it a pale horse. The other word in Hebrew for green is ra'anan, Deuteronomy 12.2. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, upon the high mountains, upon the hills, and under every green tree. Psalm 37, 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. The idea behind this Ra'anan is growth and flourishing. Psalm 52, 8, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Hosea 14, 8, a repentant Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me thy fruit is found. Connected to the idea of flourishing in Psalm 92.10, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. There are no unicorns. The word is ra'em in Hebrew, and I think nobody knows what kind of animal it is. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And in verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So the idea of green, of the green vegetation, is the, the one that's alive and is able to process and feed from the sun's rays to develop that chlorophyll to be green and flourishing. The next time we'll go on to the next color. In the meantime, Tasimita Inayama Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.